Watch you guys got another video today i'm going to show you the best free automated backup solution everyone should be using you can use whatever external source you want but i'm going to be using this sabrinth external enclosure here which supports m.2 ssd now i'm going to be using a two terabyte ssd here but you can use whatever you have to hand but this is the tallest design pretty cheap to buy and all you need is a drive to put in here and also this will make it super fast to transfer and backup files, especially if it's coming from a an NVMe drive already on the computer and it's going to this particular drive. It's gonna be super fast data transfer. That's why I want it. So this is the tallest design. You just put the drive in and move the catch around. I'm doing this with one hand here with me phone in the other end, but it is pretty straightforward. It already has a thermal pad on here. You don't need to remove any coating on it. It's already there. And then close it down and lock it into position and that is it. You're pretty much good to go. All you need here is the cable. It does come here. It's a pretty small cable, but it should do what we need it to do. But before we do that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 11 Pro or cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM keys, check out the link in the video description. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount in 2025 here. So submit your order, they will send you your key, and you can then activate your version of Windows just like you see right here. Anyway, let's get back to the tutorial. We're going to be using a free file sync. There's a free piece of software that you can use, and we're going to be using this to set up a backup for our system. This is going to be an automated offline backup, which means basically I can unplug the drive uh, once I've backed up my system and then put it into safe storage. And then when I want to back it up again or back up some data again, I can plug it in and it will automatically open up free file sync and start to back up all of that data using a script. And I'll show you that a little bit later on in a video. So let's go ahead and download free file sync and install it onto the system. Everything is default here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next and next again, and also click finish. And we are done. That is it installed. What we need to do now, you can see I've got my drive plugged in and I've named the drive backup drive and that's what I've called mine because that is exactly what the name is inside the script that I'm going to be using that someone has created. So we've got that now done. Let's go ahead and open up our free file sync program. So do a search for free file sync on your computer and then click on the icon that says free file sync and this will open up the application. Once the application's open, we can close off this first page here. We don't need to use that. So let's close that off. And I'm going to go full screen here. So on the left hand side is the source. And on the right hand side will be the destination. This is where your backup is going to copy to. This can be an external drive like we're doing, or it can be a NAS. If you want to see one for a, a network attached storage, then let me know in the comments section. But first off, we need to click the browse button on the left hand side to select the source, which is going to be the folders that we want to back up on this computer. So I'm going to be backing up some YouTube videos, but you can back up whatever you like. So I'm going to go ahead and select a folder with all the content in it. As you can see here, this is all my videos right here. Well, not all of them, but there's a bunch of videos in here that need to be backed up. So I'm going to select that folder that I want to back up and I'm going to click select folder. And this is the folder that I'm selecting. And you can see it right here with the path right here to the folder that we're going to be backing up. Next, we need to select the destination. So click browse on the destination side. And what we can do here is we need to select our external drive, which is going to be our backup drive. Mine is called backup drive. I would advise you to name yours backup drive, all one word, because that's what is on the script and that's going to help us later on in the video. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to create a folder called YouTube, and we're going to call this videos so we know exactly what is there. Select that folder. It's empty at the moment, but it's going to copy all these over once we set it up. So now we've got the path for the folder that we want to back up, and we have the destination. If you want to add more folders, just click on the plus sign and add more folders in that you want to back up to that destination. So it could be videos, it could be music, it could be all sorts of folders that you want to back up to that other destination. I'm only going to be backing up this one folder, but we now have our source backup and our destination set up. So let's click on the green cog right here 
on the synchronization side of things. So click on this one right here and open up this window. The first tab is synchronization. That's the first tab we're going to deal with. We need to choose and select a variant that we want to use. I'm going to be using mirror here because that's probably going to be the best solution for what we need. But there is other options available. But this will create a mirror backup of the left folder by adapting the right folder to match. So any new and updated files get copied to the destination and any deleted files in the source are also removed in the destination. So they're identical. They are mirroring exactly the same what's in the left hand folder to the right hand folder. So our source folder and our destination will be identical. So it's all set up here. These little arrows will explain what is going to actually happen on the mirror backup. So now we've got that done, what we need to do now is uh, create a log folder. So we can do that right here. And we also have send notifications to emails if we wanted to. But we're going to leave that one out and just do the log folder. Now, the location for this is in a location that I don't need. So I'm going to put this onto our backup drive. So let me go ahead and select our backup drive, create a new folder here and call this logs. And we can put our logs into here. This will give us a log of everything that's happened during the backup event. And if there's any errors or anything like that, it will all be logged here and we can investigate that at a later date. So from here, what we need to do is go to the filter tab. And here is where we can include or exclude what we don't want to be backed up. So if you have like temporary files or, or anything like that, you can add this in like it just shows you here. And I don't need to add anything here. But if you do, this is where you can include or exclude folders or uh, type of stuff that you don't want backed up. Next, we go to the comparison. We're going to be using the file time and size here. This will identify equal files by comparing modifications from time and size and that's probably going to be the best option for what we need now we can click ignore errors because we don't want errors from stopping the backup process if there was an error it will pop up an error box and you would then stop the process it's going to ignore those and continue to back up without any disruptions now it's time to start our backup and we can do that by clicking the synchronize button you will see start synchronize now we can ignore this box in the future if we want to but it's telling us what it's going to do when we click start it's going to copy all that data over and you can see here there's 28.6 gigabytes and that's going to copy across now the data is stored on an ssd nvme drive and we're copying it over to an ssd uh, nvme drive enclosure so that is going to be pretty quick to back up and that's the reason why i wanted to use this method because of the quick backup Look at the speed of the actual backup. I've not speeded this up and this is copying over 28 or 29 gigabytes. And we can see here it's copying it over pretty quickly. And these are video files. So that's exactly what we wanted for this particular backup process to be quick and more efficient. So if you've got photos and documents, this is going to be super quick. But these are video files, so it will take a little bit longer. Uh, but we're nearly there and once these have been copied over there will be a complete mirror image from the source folder to the destination folder and you can see that has now been completed successfully we can close this box off do not close a uh, free file sync just yet just drop it down into your taskbar here and we're going to go to file explorer and we're going to check our backup and you can see here this is our backup drive so we can go inside here and there is our youtube videos copied across there they are, and that's nice. And now we have our log folder. Let's just quickly check that. I want to check the size here as well. So 28.5 gigabytes has been copied over. That's nice. And then we can go to our logs folder, and there is our log. And we can check this to make sure everything copied across perfectly fine. So we had no problems. Now, remember, we did check uh, ignore errors. So if there was an error, it would be in that log file. It's not going to stop the backup process. And that's important. So what we'll do now is we'll create another folder and we're going to call this scripts because we're going to use a script to completely automate this whole process. So I've gone ahead and created a scripts folder on my on my drive here. You can put that folder wherever you like, but it's on my drive. We're going to go back into our free file sync and up the top here, save as batch job. We need to save this file. So we're going to go ahead and click on save as batch job right up here 
And this is what we've got right here. We can auto close this afterwards if we wanted to. And we can save as. And what we want to do is save that onto our drive. Now you can save it wherever you like, but I'm going to be saving mine onto my backup drive. So I'm going to go back here and put this into the scripts folder and select open. And we're going to save it inside. Now we will need to rename that file. And I'll explain that a little bit later on when we look at the actual script, which is this right here. This script was created by uh, Pino Bytes. And it really does make things really easy to back up. The first part is check the USB drive called backup drive and making sure it's plugged in. Here is the actual name right here, backup drive. Next, the, this part here will ask if you want to make a backup. And this is what that code is doing. This part of the code is going to run free file sync to make a backup. And this part is to safely eject the USB flash drive. And we also have this part down here, which if there's an error, which says no drive found, it will kick up a message. So you need to edit these two parts here to fit your backup. You can see this is the backup script name. Take note that it's on the E drive and my drive is E drive. You need to make sure that your drive letter is on that script. And you also need to make sure the names are exactly as they are in that script. So what we're going to do is copy that script over, which was created by Pino Bytes, into our scripts uh, folder onto our drive. Now, again, you can store these wherever you like, but I'm storing mine on my drive. So let's go ahead and there we have the actual two files. So we will need to rename that batch job file. And I didn't do it there, but I'll show you later on. That will kick up an error, but I'll show you what you need to do. So now we need to go to task scheduler. You can type that into the search or just type task and you should see task scheduler coming up. We need to create an automation here and this is what this is going to be doing right here. So once we have task scheduler open, like we have here, we're going to click on the task scheduler library and this will give you a library of all the tasks on this system. So let's go ahead and do that right here and there they are listed there. We're going to create our own new task. So let's go ahead and create a task. Click on this one right here and this box will open up. So we need to give it a name. You can call this whatever you like. And uh, this could be uh, external backup. You could call it offline external backup. You could call it external backup like I have here and give it a description. And you can call this whatever you like, external backup to USB. Or you can call it, say, external backup uh, for offline backups, whatever you want to call it. Once we have that part done, we can then move on to the triggers part and this will trigger this to run. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is click on triggers and we're going to click a new trigger and this will open up the new trigger box. Now we need to begin the task by putting a name in here and we're going to call this on an event. And from here, we need to give it a log so let's go ahead and we're going to come down here and we're going to look for this one right here. Microsoft dash windows dash driver framework dash user mode forward slash operational. Now they're in the source part. There is only one there. So select that. And for event ID, do 2003. This just tells Windows to trigger uh, the task and it will basically activate as soon as your drive is plugged in. So we're going to go ahead and click OK here, and that is now done. Next, we're going to move on to Actions. Inside Actions, click on New Action. And from here, we're going to call this Start a Program. So that's perfectly fine. And what we need to do is navigate to that script. So what we're going to do here is going to go to our backup drive, which we got right here. Click on this one. Go into scripts and select Pino Bytes uh, script that we put into that scripts folder. And that's what we should have right here. So now we can click OK and we can click OK again because we're completely finished with uh, the task uh, scheduler right now. So let's close all that off. Now we need to go to the event viewer and we need to type event and you should see event viewer there. So open this up right here. And from here, we need to navigate to Applications and Services Logs and also go to Microsoft, then Windows, open this up. And what we're going to do is just let me expand this right here 
And we're going to come down. And what we're looking for right here is this one right here. You can see driver frameworks dash user mode. So let me go ahead and select that one right here. I'm going to open this up and go to operational. And where it says on the right hand side, enable log, we're going to enable that there. So we can go ahead and close our event viewer now because we're finished inside here. And we can then test our actual backup and see if it works. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So there is our drive. We've got it plugged in. I'm going to unplug it and then plug it back in to see whether the actual script works and whether it actually tells uh, Free File Sync to ask for a backup. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to plug it back in. And we should get a little box popping up on the screen, which we do. And it says, do you want to make a backup? And of course we do. So I'm going to say yes. And this is where it will talk to Free File Sync and make a backup of any files that have changed. And you can see Free File Sync batch file not found. And that's because I never changed the actual name of the batch file that I got from Free File Sync. And I need to make sure that is identical to what was on the script. Also, it's important to make sure the drive letter is the drive letter that has been named on the script, which was E. So let's go into the scripts folder here. And this is good because that means you get to see and we need to go into the scripts folder and we need to change this one right here, batch run.ffs underscore batch. It needs to be offline dash backup dot ffs underscore batch. So I need to rename this because that's what's in the script and it can't read it because I have got the wrong name. So I've now renamed it and click OK and we can try this one more time. So let's go ahead and we will pull out the drive and put it back in and see whether we get it to work properly this time. And it says, do you want to make a backup? We're going to say yes. And there we go. It popped up on the screen real quick. It says backup ready. Backup created. You're safe to reject the drive. There wasn't no data to backup, so it was very, very quick. But if I add any more data, which I will, to that documents area where I've selected Camtasia, when I record videos, and I plug in my drive to make a backup, it's going to constantly make backups of all that data without me having to do anything. Now, it's important to note that the drive needs to be called backup drive, as you can see what I've got here. And it's also important to give it a drive letter. Uh, you can change it in the script to whatever drive letter you like, say, for instance, Z, if you wanted to, and make it Z on here, and it will never change once it's done. But I'm, I've left it as E for now, but if you wanted to change it, you need to change it there, and that should be good to go. So anytime I plug in my drive, I can take this drive with me so it's off-site, so I can have it on me at all times. And when I'm working, if I want to make a backup on this computer, and I've been working, and I've got a number of different videos that I've done, because I've selected that video folder, it's going to copy those straight over to that drive. And if I delete any on this computer, it will also delete them on that drive. So they're an absolute mirror image of each other. It's that simple. So a big shout out to uh, Pinot Bytes for creating that script. I really do appreciate it. It's going to help me out quite a bit. And you can use this automated offline backup as part of your 321 backup uh, solution. So it's a really good option for people that want to be able to back up and store it away from the computer. So if anything happens, they always have a backup of their precious data on there. And when you plug it in, it will automatically start to back up all the data that you've got on the computer that's changed and it will copy it straight over. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below what you think about this backup method. I think it's pretty awesome. I just want to wish everyone a happy new year. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and let's have an awesome 2025. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.